In this video, we're going to talk about London dispersion forces. These are forces that are found in every type of atom, every type of molecule. However, they are the predominant force found in nonpolar molecules. So let's say if we have an atom with a nucleus with a positive charge, and there are electrons around the atom. Now, this atom is nonpolar. The electrons are evenly distributed among this atom. Now, let's say it's in the gas phase, and the net charge is positive 6. So this atom is a nonpolar atom due to the even distribution of electrons. Now, as these electrons are constantly moving about in the atom, there's going to be a moment where there's going to be more electrons on one side as opposed to the other side. So due to the random motion of the electrons about the nucleus, at some point, most of the electrons might be on the left side, and some will be on the right side. And so now, we have an uneven distribution of electrons. So this atom is temporarily polarized. It's polarized in the sense that one side of the atom, the side that is electron deficient, has a partial positive charge, and the side that has more electrons has a partial negative charge. So right now, this atom is a dipole. It's a temporary dipole. It doesn't last very long. It lasts for a very short time. And this dipole can cause another neutral atom to turn into a dipole. So it can induce another dipole in a similar molecule. So let's put another atom next to it in the gas phase. So this atom is neutral. The electrons are evenly distributed, so it's nonpolar like this one. Now the electrons will be attracted to the partial positive charge of the right side of that atom. So therefore, the electrons will feel a force of attraction. And so this electron cloud will become distorted. And so we're going to have this situation. The first atom is going to be the same. It still has its temporary dipole. And now the second atom is polarized as well. It has an induced dipole. So now this side of the atom, which has a partial positive charge, is attracted to the left side of the second atom with its partial negative charge. And so that force of attraction that connects those two atoms, this is the London dispersion force. It's a temporary dipole-induced dipole interaction. So this dipole caused this atom to be induced into a dipole. So this is an induced dipole. It was created by the other atom. And so this interaction is temporary, short-lived. It doesn't last very long. Now, London dispersion forces is dependent on the number of electrons that's found in an atom. So for example, iodine, which has about 53 electrons, is more polarizable than fluorine, which has about 9 electrons. And so iodine is a bigger atom than fluorine. And typically, larger molecules with more electrons are more polarizable than smaller molecules. The term polarizability means that the electron cloud can easily become distorted. So the more electrons you have, as they move randomly about the atom, the chances of an induced dipole forming, or an instantaneous dipole, will increase. Because the more electrons you have, there's going to be an increased probability that one side is going to have more electrons than the other side. So the chances of distorting the electron cloud goes up. So London dispersion forces increases with increased polarizability. And the polarizability of an atom is dependent on the number of electrons found in the atom. So what you need to know is this. 
nonpolar molecules with more electrons have more London dispersion forces than nonpolar molecules with less electrons. Consider the noble gases helium, neon, argon, and krypton. So, which of these molecules would you expect to have the greatest London dispersion forces? Helium contains two electrons. Neon has 10 electrons. Argon has 18 electrons. And krypton has 36. So therefore, we should expect that krypton should have the highest London dispersion forces. In fact, the boiling points of these gases are as follows. The boiling point for helium is negative 269 Celsius. For neon, it's negative 249 Celsius. For argon, it's negative 186. And for krypton, negative 153. So what general trend do you notice? Notice that the boiling point increases with increasing LDF. So the more dispersion forces that a molecule has, the greater the boiling point will be. So as the number of electrons within an atom or within a molecule increases, the boiling point of that substance will increase due to the increased amount of intermolecular forces, specifically London dispersion forces. Now keep in mind, the London dispersion force is a type of intermolecular force. Other intermolecular forces include dipole interactions and hydrogen bonds. Now consider these four molecules, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Which of these would you expect to have the highest boiling point? Well, first, let's find out which one has the most number of electrons. Now, every fluorine atom has nine electrons. So if we multiply that by two, we would get 18 electrons in the fluorine molecule. Now, a chlorine atom has 17 electrons. So this would be 34 in total. Bromine has 35, so that's going to be 70 in total. And iodine has 53 times two, so that's going to be 106 in total. So we know that the molecule with the most number of electrons is the one that's going to have the highest amount of London dispersion forces. So therefore, we should expect that iodine will have the highest boiling point. In fact, iodine is a purple solid. Bromine is a red liquid. Chlorine and fluorine are gases. Solids usually have a very high boiling point, and gases tend to have a very low boiling point. The boiling point of fluorine is negative 188 degrees Celsius. It's very low. The boiling point of chlorine is negative 34. The boiling point of bromine, it's 59, which makes sense. It's a liquid. And the boiling point of iodine is 184 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, Iodine has the highest boiling point because it has the most amount of London dispersion forces. It has the greatest amount of electrons, so which means that iodine is highly polarizable. Now let's consider one more example. So I'm going to draw two molecules, and I want you to determine which of these two molecules has the higher boiling point. So on the left, this substance is known as pentane. On the right, it's neopentane. So which molecule would you expect to have the higher boiling point? Now, both molecules have the same molecular formula. They both have five carbons and 12 hydrogens. So therefore, they have the same number of electrons. However, they are different in one aspect. This is a straight-chained alkane, and here we have a branched alkane. It turns out that pentane has a higher boiling point than neopentane. The boiling point of pentane 
is 36 Celsius and the boiling point of neopentane is 9.5 Celsius. Pentane looks like this. It's a straight chain alkane. Neopentane is more circular. So notice that pentane has more surface area than neopentane. And that's why it has a higher boiling point. So what you need to know is this. Whenever you increase the surface area of a substance, the amount of London dispersion forces between those molecules will increase. And as a result, the boiling point will increase as well. So molecules that are straight-chained tend to have a higher boiling point than molecules that are branched.